Welcome everyone, uh, both in person and online. Um, this forum is called Elections in Brazil, Bolsonaro, Fire Right, Coup Threats and Left Resistance. And it's been organized by Green Left and Socialist Alliance. Um, if you're with us face to face tonight, um, please grab some food if you haven't already. Um, please uh, remember to wear a mask or social distance if you can. And please keep your phones on silent for the uh, entire forum. Uh, there's toilets up the corridor. Um, just take the keys there. Uh, before we start, I just want to acknowledge that we are on stolen land, um, Gadigal Wongu land of the Aura Nation, um, land that was never ceded. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. So, We've organized this forum to discuss the upcoming elections in Brazil, which are next month. Um, last month, to give you the context, last month, thousands of people took to the streets in defense of democracy as a reaction to far-right president Jair Bolsonaro making baseless claims uh, about Brazil's electronic voting system. Um, he said it was vulnerable to fraud, even though there's been no documented cases of voter fraud since uh, the system was adopted in 1996. Um, the elections are also happening in the context of recent uh, left or centre-left victories in Colombia um, recently and last year, Chile, the election of um, Gabriel Boris. And tonight we are lucky to be joined by Luana Alves, um, who's a socialist city councillor in Sao Paulo, an activist with the MES or the socialist left movement tendency within the Socialism and Freedom Party or PESOL, PESOL which is Brazil's largest radical anti-capitalist party. Um, we are also joined in person by Andre Mazor, who co-founded Fruits from Brazil, which is a not-for-profit association which supports the LGBTQI plus Brazilian community in Australia. So he's based in Sydney. Fruits of Brazil won the 2022 Spirit of 78 award in Mardi Gras for their Bolsonaro out float. And Andre has been, has written about Brazilian politics, the green left, and to explain what's been taking place and the significance for the movement against ecocidal capitalism and the far right. So first we're gonna hear from Luana then we'll hear from Andre and open it up for discussion. Um, so we're, this is being recorded for, for Green Left. So please uh, share it online on your social media. Um, it's going to be on YouTube. So share it on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Um, so first we are going to hear from Luana when you're ready. Okay. Uh, hello, guys. Thank you for the invitation. Hello, we, can, we can hear you loud and clear. Great. Hello. So, uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Uh, here in Brazil, it's kind of five of the morning, five and a half of the morning. Uh, we have some difference of time, but that's no problem at all. So I don't know if you want to start making some questions or if I can uh, speak a little bit about the elections. Okay, okay. Uh, so let me try to to make a to to make a context. Uh, here in Brazil, we are from less than a month for the elections. We are um, like uh, fifty uh, twenty days uh, for the elections, and uh, and we are really really in a very very historical time to Brazil. Bolsonaro, uh, he's been around for some decades. He's not a new figure in Brazil. He's been a politician for, I don't know, for 30 years. He's been a, a, a congressman for a lot of years. So he's not really new. He doesn't really represent any new movement in Brazil. But uh, somehow he was able in the last five years to be the the, the big figure of a far right uh, worldwide movement. He was very able to, you know, to, to catch this feeling and to catch this, uh, this, this political moment. 
Uh, so Bolsonaro is not only himself, he represents a lot of uh, a far right movement worldwide and here in Brazil. Uh, and here in Brazil, this movement, uh, he is within people, his reactionary movement is within people, uh, um, it's been growing in the last, I, I guess I can say 10 years. Uh, there's a lot of, of uh, whys for this, but I guess that uh, so let me try to say this here in brazil there is a really 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 strong deep rooted social inequality deep rooted uh almost like a society of a big hierarchical structure so poor people are very poor rich people are very rich so uh, in the last few years in the pt government there have been some advancements uh poor people uh could have a, a little bit of more inclusion, but not a socialist inclusion, a capitalist inclusion, but even a little bit. But this kind of, uh, this message with Brazilian hierarchical society. So this reactionary feeling really came uh, in, a, in some movements also, and it's kind of a backlash to our movement, to women's movement, youth movement, black movement, LGBT movement, there has been a uh, getting strength in the last few years in Brazil. And this is also a backlash in this sense. So Bolsonaro was able to catch this reactionary feeling and strengthen it. So now uh, what we see is that in Brazil, the Bolsonaro government uh, has not been a good government. So this is the thing. People that voted for him uh, four years ago, a lot of these people don't want to vote for him again, even uh, people that have a more conservative background, because there is uh, it's a, a really bad government, especially because it was a neoliberal, a neoliberalist government. Uh, that there is less jobs, less salary. Uh, in the COVID pandemic, is Bolsonaro had a really uh, terrible administration. So he's a negationist, he's a, an anti-vax. And here in Brazil, uh, people really believe the vaccines. So there is not really this feeling against vaccines. And Bolsonaro tried to export this to Brazil, tried to export all, all the most backlash elements in the world to bring here. This is not. Uh, this was not really so welcome for the Brazilian people. Uh, so now what he face uh, is that Bolsonaro is trying to create a chaos here in Brazil. Uh, he's trying to, uh, to put people on the streets for riots uh, to support him. So uh, this is very dangerous because the left here, uh, the, the more traditional left represented by PT, uh, there is a, a, it's not really a socialist party, PT is more like a social democratic party more like a, a, a kind of a class conciliation uh, government. So PT is having the, the decision of not really uh, hottening things up. I don't know if you guys understand this. Uh, PT is trying to calm, things, uh, to calm the things down. It's trying to put people out of the streets. To just, uh, they are saying to people, that's it, we are going to defeat Bolsonaro and we are going to defend democracy by staying in our houses and just going to vote in the, in the day of the voting. So the only, uh, uh, the only one is speaking about going to the streets now is Bolsonaro. So this is very dangerous, both for the elections, because the Bolsonaro uh, uh, sector stays more, uh, um, they, 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 they grow more, more strong. And also because Bolsonaro can still have this, can still defend this lie that he is the anti-systemic candidate. Because this happens. The, our candidate here, Lula, he's been a president for a lot of years here in Brazil in this time of some advancements for the people. But Lula is not the new candidate. It's not like uh, he doesn't really represent the last movement that happened in Brazil in the last few years. The movement of young people on the streets uh, for the rights, uh, the, 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 the women, the black people. So Lula, uh, he's kind of... Uh, the conciliation uh, and and people want to vote for him but people doesn't really stay uh with um, with a fire in their hearts with lula uh, i want to say that people doesn't want to go to the streets because this is not the 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 political of the, the politics of pt so this is dangerous because bolsonaro uh, he's still the guy who talks against the system for the people this is a lie we know this is a lie but he still can say that 
he's the guy that defends freedom and, and radically, uh, and he's the radical. This is really, really dangerous. Thanks, Luana. Um, I'm sure we can get into more in the discussion. I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions and uh, an opportunity for you to expand on on that um, sort of nice picture, I guess, of, of what's going on um, in the lead up to elections. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go to Andre next and then after we'll get into discussion. Hello. Um, in 2015, I started a, a work, a video for, to tell the Brazilian LGBTQI community here in Australia about their rights. And that time I met a girl, Nina, and we decided to open like the, the name, make a group, Fruits from Brazil. And in 2018, we registered as a non-profit association. And we started to do a lot of different kinds of jobs to help people and the community here. And, and I helped a lot of, like the, the rally in 2008, like the, against Bolsonaro before the election. And we did like the, the International Women's Day here in Sydney. And I helped to organize to talk about Marielle, and I made some videos too about this. And and I'm still working now. I work with like Socialist Alliance here in Girl Left to teach uh, English for Brazilian students here. And I can have, ask, ask some questions if you want to. Tell. I don't know how much what I can say then. No. Okay, well maybe it'll it'll work better if we just go um, to discussion, because um, then I guess it could be more of a, a back and forth between everyone here, um, you know, rather than you have to. Um, so uh, with discussion, um, if everyone could, please, if you want to ask a question, you know, raise your hand or indicate um, in the chat, and we'll you know run through it. But please keep your contributions um, to three minutes. Um, I will, you know, when it, when it gets to three minutes and if you've gone over, then I will have to direct you to, to wind up, um, that goes for online and in person. And so if you, you know, if you'd like to ask a question, please indicate in the chat or raise your hand. Um, if not, I c I've got a few questions that I'd like to ask. Uh, so Fred. Uh, firstly, uh, thank you to, to both the speakers. Um, I've got two questions. One is a very specific one, and which is I'd be interested to know the impact uh, both of the recent assassination attempt against Christina Kirchner and also of the, the Chilean referendum in Brazil. Uh, I imagine it's had some, at least created some discussion, both of the potential of violence, but also the fact that um, the left were unsuccessful in getting in, a, in winning their vote uh, in Chile. And then my second question is more general, um, which is, I think, and, and Luana um, began to talk about it, but perhaps can go into more detail. I, I think it's fascinating, and it's not just a Brazilian uh, um, phenomenon, but how in particular, but not exclusively far right politicians, even though, as Luana said, Bolsonaro has been in government for 30 years, can still present themselves as the anti-system candidate. Um, so literally you're the one in power and yet somehow you're the one running against power. And that's happened in many places. So I'd be interested to, for Luana to say, how does the left grapple with that, particularly given there's so much pressure to support Lula, who, as you said, is very much seen as the system candidate. Um, and then maybe also as part of that is, like who is the Bolsonaro supporters? Because you, you talked a lot about, there's a lot of people who reject Bolsonaro, but he still has maybe 20, 30% of the vote. So I'm interested to know who, who is Bolsonaro able to get? Because I, I don't imagine 20, 30% of Brazilians are all far right. Um, you know, I think it, there's obviously a core, but others supporting for other reasons. So I'd be interested to go into that more generally. Thanks, Fred. Um, maybe... I'll, I'll put forward a question and then we can go to Luana and then under if you want to respond to that. Um, it might just be easier instead of having to go back and forth each time. But my question was, Luana, you were saying that PT sort of is this social democratic party and that they 
throughout the whole process of of um, Bolsonaro trying to you know get people in the streets to to heat things up, as you say. Um, whereas PT is is sort of demobilizing, it seems, and trying to stop people from going going to the streets because I guess it's probably part of this quite electoralist focus. Um, I'm just wondering what is is there much going on, you know, outside of PT that's trying to mobilize people and get people onto the streets. Um, and I guess what what role has has Pesol, for example, been playing um, in in this whole process. Um, so that was my question. So if maybe if you want to respond to that, I'll go to Luana first, and then Andre, if you have something to add as well. Okay, uh, thank you guys for the questions. So about the about Krishna Kishner, uh, here in Brazil, uh, it had a really uh, people talked a lot about this. Uh, it had a, a repercussion because the guy was a Brazilian guy. He's uh, he's lives in uh, the the. Uh, the guy who almost murdered her. It was like a, a really, almost like a miracle because uh, it would have been a really bad, bad scene, a, a really tragedy. Uh, so what happened uh, is that uh, he had repercussions here because that guy was not only Brazilian, uh, but he was a neo-Nazi. Uh, he was what we call neo-Nazi, like a new facet guy. There, uh, there's a lot of groups of neo-Nazis here in Brazil, new faces, new Nazi people. It, uh, it bugs our minds because we are in Latin America, but there is a lot of uh, cells of uh, young guys uh, that they are attracted to the ideas of fascism. Uh, I guess there's a lot of explanations for that. I don't really uh, uh, know how to detail. But here there is a lot of these guys and, and the Bolsonaro government, they exploded because Bolsonaro, uh, he represents a voice that really has a lot, a lot of connections with the neo-Nazi movement. So this is very worrying. Uh, uh, in the last four years in the Bolsonaro government, some of his officials, some of these spokespersons of the government, uh, like some ministers, some secretaries, uh, they, uh, they were catch doing Nazi gestures. Like, um, I don't know how to, I don't want to repeat the gest, but like in the interview, making a, 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 a thing with their hands that the Nazi people know that this is a sign for them, you know? So this uh, kind of happened in the last four years. So we know that, we know for a fact that there is Nazis organizers uh, in the Bolsonaro government, like officials in ministers and secretaries this is really really worrying uh, so this is this this uh, so people know this uh, and also also kind of uh, put in the discussion about guns because here bolsonaro one of these one of his big uh, propagandas is about guns uh, here in brazil there is not uh, it's not like in the usa with a lot of guns culture uh, that the, the, this didn't used to be but now it's trying, uh, it's starting to be the Bolsonaro government. So uh, one of his promises uh, four years ago in the campaign was guns, guns for everybody. This was a campaign promise. So he still defend this. Uh, he's, um, so here in Brazil, we have this thing of gesture. So uh, when we say about Lula or that we are going for Lula, we make this. There is an L. Uh, when uh, people say that they, uh, they support Bolsonaro, they do this. There's a gun. So a lot of people, uh, like in the streets, when we try to make, um, we like held a pamphlet for people uh, in the streets, like uh, in subways and terminals of bus. Uh, some people would try to uh, uh, to to bring a pamphlet to the end of Lula, and they do this, and we know that okay, we don't want to talk. We we have you support Bolsonaro. This is a sign. So uh, it, it had a really bad repercussion here because people, uh, okay, oh, Bolsonaro is, uh, is try, it, it's almost like Brazilian people recognize that, oh, Bolsonaro followers are dangerous guys. That, 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 that's it, okay? So about Chile, we, uh, the, the, the repercussion were not so strong as the Krishna Kirchner uh, murder trying. Because here, they, that, that's it. We got sad in the left because we had hopes that the, the, the people voted for yes in Chile because it is a fruit of the streets, uh, 
street people in the street. So it was a really, I guess it was a, uh, it, it was bad. So that's it. We just got sad. We don't really understood. We thought that uh, uh, people would vote for yes, but most people would for no. Uh, also to say something about how things are in Chile, things are not so good in Chile. That's what. That's why we thought. But it was a subject not so much talking about in Brazil because people are talking about the elections a lot here in Brazil. So that's it. Uh, so uh, about the, the question of Fred, the anti system thing, uh, I don't really know how to, how to detail that because uh, it really that doesn't make any sense. Because Bolsonaro, he's been a congressman for 30 years. Uh, his children, his, uh, he has uh, three or children, he, three guys that are politicians too. So this is, uh, this is really connected to the old politics in Brazil. To be a politics and to put your sons in the politics, it's not a new, uh, it's not a, a thing that anti-system people do to put like a, almost like aristocracy in the politics, you know? So he's, 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 he has the profile of the old politician white guy in Brazil. He has this profile. So, but somehow, he can say that he is against the system. I guess this is really connected uh, to the backlash uh, of the backlash of the cultural backlash. Like uh, he's a guy who talks against feminism, so this really uh, connects with some men in Brazil. Uh, he talks about against the struggles of black people, against the, the struggles of LGBT people. Uh, he can uh, have his basis in some Brazilian churches. Uh, uh, so here in Brazil, most people are Catholic. People are very religious here in Brazil. Uh, but some part of people are from evangelical churches. And these evangelical churches, some of them are radicalized. And some of them, they really, uh, find, uh, they really, they have financial associations with Bolsonaro government because he makes a lot of tax. Um, how can I say that? I don't know how, how to say that in English. Uh, he, these churches are really happy with him because he doesn't. Uh, they, they don't have to pay taxes in the Bolsonaro government. They 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 can get rich. This, this evangelical churches. So they really uh, defend the president and they really have a big influence in Brazilian people, especially women. So this is very bad because these churches say to the working women that Bolsonaro is the guy who is defending the family, the guy who is defending the children, the guy who is against the abortion, the guy who is against the, uh, you know, everything bad that the left does. So there is really this, uh, this also head scare still happening here in Brazil. This is very strong in Brazil. The head scare in Brazil is deeply rooted in the military dictatorship that happened in to 64 to the 80s, end of 80s here in Brazil. Uh, so th there was, it has, it, it has to do with imperialists because it was a military dictatorship. Uh, there was, um, Against communism, they, they said that Brazil was uh, to, if, you know, having the risk of being a communist country in the 60s. So they had to to to, to give a, a coup d'état in Brazil. So this thing, uh, this head scare is still very rooted among some people here in Brazil because it was an imperialist propaganda, a very strong imperialist propaganda. So it still have repercussions. And the, the people here. So uh, he can say that he is the one who defeats the communist system in Brazil. It, it, it doesn't have to do with reality, but this is what he says. And also because there is this very oh, perverse uh, thing that PT uh, was government for some years, for more than 10 years, and PT had a government of class conciliation. It was not a communist government, people know that. Uh, but in the last years of PT, there was the global crisis here in Brazil. The global crisis that happened in the whole world, uh, but had some repercussions here. And it was in the same time that some corruption scandals started about PT here in Brazil. So it kind of people connected uh, the worsening of their lives like the, the lack of job, uh, the less salaries, a crisis, a financial crisis. They associated the financial crisis with uh, PT corruption scandals. Like uh, like if PT took all our money, 
So this is, is something that the far right, uh, a, a narrative that the far right tried to put, and they were very successful uh, because they said, oh, you are without money, without jobs, not having to do with the crisis because PT stole in the corruption scandals. So this is, uh, so I, I don't really can say about these corruption scandals. I guess that, that, that there was some corruption. I, I guess this is because it's about the system, the system, the, the capitalist, the, the relation uh, with uh, government and, and the, the market uh, itself is corrupt. So I, I think that there is, a, of course, there was corruption, but just like in all the government. So uh, people really, uh, you, we, we, we had this feeling we call anti-petism, like a, a, a feeling of against PT, a feeling that PT is everything bad and, and they represent the, the, all the worsening of the lives of people. So this is what's happening. But right now, uh, Bolsonaro, this, this narrative is not so strong anymore because in the Bolsonaro government, people still had their salaries uh, put it down. They still had less jobs. They still had uh, worsening of their lives because it's a neoliberal government. So people still had less rights, less schools, less uh, public health. So people, uh, re even the the like even this kind this sector of people that is very evangelical, very Christian, very conservative, they are still poor. And they are feeling the Bolsonaro government. So uh, things that I kind of, uh, I don't think Bolsonaro is, is getting to be reelected, but uh, nothing is, is guaranteed, you know. So uh, right now, the polls say that he's not going to be reelected, but uh, that's it. We don't really know. Uh, we have to make campaign. It's, it's nothing guaranteed. So about the streets that I guess you asked me and the role of the soul, that's it, right? Uh, we are trying to negotiate with PT. Uh, so we can make this day, uh, 10th of September, as a day this Saturday, this this, this this next Saturday, we want to make a day of people in the streets for democracy, because uh, in the seventh, uh, in the seventh, seventh of September, there uh, is the fourth of July of Brazil, the Independence Day in Brazil, seventh of September, and Bolsonaro uh, is trying to make a big day for him like uh, calling protests, calling protests for guns, against, uh, for freedom, against communists, everything. So he's trying to make this, this big day of the far right in Brazil uh, in, the, in September 7, and we're trying to make it September 10 uh, in different days, but or otherwise uh, people can get hurt in the same day. So we're trying to make this, this day, we're trying to negotiate with PT, so they, so they call to, uh, so th there is these forums uh, of the Brazilian left, like uh, a forum with PSOL, PT, some other parties, some social movements. Uh, we uh, usually have meetings before, uh, before the, the day of the protest, before the day of the riot. So we're trying to call a meeting for today or uh, not today, not, uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, so we're trying to, to call they they say that okay okay nice guys you can go but they don't really commit it you know they don't really uh, uh, make a commitment with us so they were trying <laughs> to convince uh, our comrades uh, and also our, our allies to make this day of protest here in Brazil so a protest uh, that says about democracy because this is an important uh, defense of democracy because uh, Bolsonaro is is trying to to uh, to attack the Brazilian electoral system. There is a very safe electoral system. There's not been a lot of, this is very good because here in Brazil, there is a lot of uh, corruption because it's a country led by rich men. So of course there'll be a lot of corruption, but uh, the electoral system is a very safe electoral system. And Bolsonaro is an electronic uh, device that people vote. And the, the, the results, they, we have the results like in some hours, two hours. It's, it's a really fast uh, operation. But Bolsonaro is trying to say that there has been fraud and they are not safe. And also, this is trying to, it's kind of a movement to put people uh, like uh, in a state of confusion and not going to vote anyway. So people that could vote for Lula, they just don't, 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 don't go to vote because, oh, they can be, 
uh, is stole, so that there can be a fraud, you know. So we were trying to to call this day at September 10 uh, as a unified uh, day uh, to be in the streets for the democracy. Thanks, Lana. That was a great response um, to those questions. Um, did you have anything to add to that, Andre? And about that, who supports Bolsonaro in Brazil? That is like the big church, big uh, new Pentecostal church, because that's a big business in Brazil. But there are also the ag the big farms, the big agriculture, uh, like the because Bolsonaro supports. They put a lots of poison in the foods, and they produce a big and destroy the environment, and they they burn our forests. And the, the Bolsonaro support them, you know they in. It's and and the big like it's some medias in Brazil because these churches they have medias they have big big TV channels and they support they and a lot of lies because Bolsonaro he lied a lot and and the people believe you know and thank you um so we've got coral. I've um, got a question. I'll just bring the mic over to you. Oh, thanks very much for uh, coming and talking to us, Luana. Um, w I think we were in Brazil about 2008 or around that time when Lula was still in power. And we were really surprised that there was no sort of um, campaign in the streets or any sort of show of support for him. Like it seemed totally, not apathetic, but just there was no signs of the the government and what they were trying to do. I, I mean, we'd come from Brazil, we, uh, not, we'd come from Venezuela, which was totally different. Like there was always campaigns and people marching in the streets the whole time during Chavez's election. So it was sort of quite obvious to us that there didn't seem to be any of this campaigning or support around Lula and the government. That's one thing. The other thing I was wondering, what is Lula running on? What is his policy um, for this election? Thank you. Um, yeah, I guess I've got another question to add and then we can go back to you two. Um, you touched on it, on there about the sort of the media um, landscape. I'm interested to know I guess how much support Bolsonaro receives in in the media, and if that's you know changing now, or you know how much of a platform is he given, and I guess you know in terms of say misinformation coming up to the elections. Um, I know with the the referendum or the the plebiscite in Chile, there was a lot of um, misinformation circulating in the media, a lot of fake news about what I guess what would happen if a new constitution was brought in, um, things that were, you know, saying that um, Indigenous people would take over the country and get all of the power in government, or that if the constitution was brought in, that um, people would be able to abort a, a pregnancy term at, at nine months, and just like all, you know, all of this clearly very fake news, but that was, it seemed to have quite a, a powerful impact on, um, you know, how people voted so i'd just like to get an idea as well of of um yeah i guess what the media landscape is like in in brazil um so we'll go to luana first and then andre if you want to add anything after okay so uh let me say uh about fake news a little bit uh before answering because i, I thought about saying this but i forgot but fake news is a, a really big uh, explanation for you know some problems that we are having here because some of the support of bolsonaro has to do uh, with fake news and has to do with really uh, like these bubbles of the society so people that doesn't talk to to someone like outside their churches you know so they don't really know about what's going on so there's been a lot of fake news in Brazil. Uh, there is an old fake news that I remember when I was a kid that I heard this. It's a really old fake news, but there's it's still around that Lula is going to close all the churches. Like uh, if Lula wins, he's going to close all the evangelical churches so people cannot vote for him. So a lot of people believe this. Uh, there is also a lot of fake news related to the LGBT people. So this, uh, this is terrible because uh, this is a backlash, a, a strong uh, 
it's terrible because uh, in the PT government, uh, we had some victories, like uh, victories of uh, putting in the official curriculum in Brazil, uh, curriculum of schools about the diversity, like uh, to put in the official curriculum of Brazil, that in the schools, the teachers uh, could speak about sexual diversity and about LGBT people and about tolerance and about how everybody deserves respect. And this is, a, this is a, a, a source of fake news here in Brazil. The teachers in the PT government are teaching our kids to be gay, uh, teaching our kids that they can be a lesbian. So this is a big, big, big narrative in the churches. It's very, it, it's, it's disgusting, really. Uh, but people, uh, they, they really believe that and they, they don't want to vote because Lula is supporting the gay people and making making your kids turn gay. So this is part of the fake news here in Brazil. And about the question, uh, uh, the comparative about Brazil and Venezuela, it's a really good question because it really shows the difference uh, between the victory of the left here in Brazil and the victory of the left in some other countries that had a Bolivarian project, that had an anti-system project. Because Venezuela, uh, just like uh, some other countries, like Bolivia, uh, had uh, had left government in the beginning of of the two thousand years, uh, and this government they had a commitment uh, with a different project of society, like Evo Morales had, like uh, uh, Venezuela started to have. So what happened is that here in Brazil, the left who won uh, took steps to make a class conciliation. And this means uh, to have less propaganda of yourself, to have less, um, I don't want to say propaganda in a bad way, but they they don't really talk about the government a lot because they don't put their, the, the government start, uh, stops to put themselves as a different project. They start to put themselves like uh, managing the system. It's not anti-system. It's like managing the system uh, so the system can be less bad to poor people. This is what PT represents in my opinion. So they, they are not going to, to, to be like in Venezuela. They are not going to say about the government to make to, to keep people mobilized. They don't want to keep people mobilized. This is bad because the good thing is that people uh, do not be do not be mobilized to uh, just work and go on with their lives and not uh, participating of political movements. Uh, so this uh, is a really good comparison because it really shows the difference here. And this class conciliation politics, uh, it really was bad even for our neighbors. It was bad for Venezuela, it was bad for Peru, it was bad for Bolivia, because in some years of Lula government, even like uh, the politics of Petrobras, hey, there is the Brazilian big oil company, uh, it was a, a really neoliberalist uh, political, it, it really it was bad for our neighbors, it was bad for Venezuela, it was bad for, because it has implications in, our, in the, the nearby countries. So, what happened is that uh, this comparison between Brazil and Venezuela in 2009, I guess, when you went, uh, when you came to Brazil, uh, it was a really good comparison because that, that was it. The government, uh, they have advancements, but they don't really want to keep people to keep people mobilized, to to put uh, to say about the government in the streets. No. Thanks, Luana. Um, also, yeah, Coral was sorry. Was just um, wondering about. The, the actual policies that Lula has presented. I know you've said that he's, um, you know, he's not anti-system. He's very much sort of within managing the system. Um, I guess what are, what are some of the policies, if any, that he's, you know, put forward or that PT has, has put forward? Um, maybe Andre, if you, did you have anything to add to these? And then we can go back to the liner. I think that the big problem, when did Brazil discover the oil there and Petrobras? Uh, the politician was quite good. It's not like it's not perfect, but you have like uh, more parts of the money with the big investment in education that the PT want to do and health system. But the U.S. started to make programs and colorful revolution in Brazil against the Brazilian president at the time. And this provoked like big rallies and for the limitation and like when she said about the PT, the people has anti-PT, there's a, before had a big propaganda, big investments of the US to talk bad things about PT to, to new liberalism party come back again. Because 
uh, Dilma, the, the ex-president of Brazil, she was this ultimate like uh, the new liberal party in Brazil. And they started provoking having meetings in the U.S. to take off her. But by accident, Bolsonaro was winning, you know, because he started to invest a lot of fake news and he worked with the same people who worked with Trump. And now he's the Brazilian president. Thank you. Um, I'll go back to you, Luana, if you wanted to respond to the, yeah, the previous question. Okay, yeah. Uh, so his, I really agree uh, with our comrade about the, the propaganda that came from US, especially in the Brazilian press and the Brazilian media. This was a, a really uh, artificially created feeling of the NCPT feeling. About Petrobras, uh, th there is a kind of polemic subject. I think that the PT government uh, has a, had a position, there was a dangerous position. Uh, it was not submissive to the US, but it was still not really connected with the movements, with the movements in Latin America. So it was kind of a hybrid position, like uh, in the middle of the way. So it really put it, uh, the, the OPT government in, the, in, the, in a really bad position. But even if PT had um, a, a more radical position, uh, economical radical position to be like uh, uh, associated with the radical government of Venezuela and Bolivia and Peru, uh, they were going to be attacked, uh, how they were attacked anyway. So what happened uh, is that uh, really uh, Brazilian people were bombarded with a lot of, of really imperialist propaganda uh, in the last years of PT. It was a really, it was visible that was a, a movement. Uh, so what happened is, uh, is that uh, some protests happened in 2013 here in Brazil, very led by young people with one, uh, here, uh, like in the big cities of Brazil, 2000. 13, we, uh, we, we call this June 2013, uh, to, uh, to, to 30 June, uh, where a lot of riots uh, erupted here in Brazil. It started with one subject, there is the price of the bus. So young people, they, do, they, they didn't have the money to pay for bus and they went to the streets and it became something really big. And when this happened, the far right, uh, financial, but a lot of uh, forces, they went and they took this movement. They took this movement for themselves. They took this movement as an anti-government movement. So this is what, what happened here. And the, the, the first answer of PT was a bad answer. It was not an answer of trying to discuss with people on the street. It was an answer just of like uh, ignoring at first and then uh, they, they, they didn't differentiate. They, uh, the answer of PT at last here in Sao Paulo, where I live, was an answer of like um, discrediting people in the streets, like saying that they, 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 did, they didn't know what they were doing. So these people, they don't have, they have free time, they'll go with, they don't go with the protest. So this is what happened. It was a really, uh, it was a moment of uh, where things, uh, became dangerous because the, there is the, the thing that PT is like the system. So this is really dangerous. We are paying the price now. Thanks, Luana. Um, so we've got a question online from Susan. Uh, how real is the danger of a coup if Bolsonaro loses the election? And what is the current attitude of the military towards a likely Lula victory? Um, and we've got a question from Jim and then I'll pass it back to you too. Oh, uh, Rachel. Uh, thanks, comrades. Uh, really interesting. Uh, Rachel from Sydney. I've got a question about the PESOL and the consciousness, consciousness of young people to socialist ideas and organising. So it's a first past the post system in Brazil. So that means it really is posed as a PT versus Bolsonaro. Um, and but the PT, the PESOL, uh, who have been working with PT and outside the PT, um, what's your strength? Um, how many MPs and councillors do you have? Um, and what movements are you helping to lead? And the final question is, what's the strength of the unions 
Um, are they independent of the PT or are they tied very much to social democracy? Well, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, maybe we'll go back to you two because there's a there's probably a fair bit to cover there and then we can go to Jim's question after. So uh, maybe Luana and then Andre. Okay, uh, so about the, the possibility of coup, I think the risk is real. I, I don't think it's impossible to happen because the military really support Bolsonaro. The military, they have a really conservative background. They have an anti-communist background. They have a, so this, this is a risk because what happens is that they, they have the, the guns, they have the, the strength. Uh, but I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I think it's more possible that they can make some, that they, they can create problems. Like uh, in the day of, uh, I think Lula is going to win. We hope we, we are working for this. But I think that in the day, like, uh, I think something like what happened in the capital in the US, they could happen here in Brazil. You know, I don't think they have the, 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 the strength to make a, a, a organized coup d'etat, but the radicalized right wing people, they can create a lot of problems. They can attack our organizations. They can attack even PT. They can attack uh, the, the, the militants of PT, the people who support Lula. I think this can happen. I think that, that the, it's not going to be like a, a really well organized movement to take the government against the vote. But I think they can make, um, they can create a lot of problems for us, especially the, the radicalized uh, right wing guys. So this is what can happen. I think the, a very big risk. And about the military, uh, the military, they, I don't think they're going to, uh, to enter an adventure. I think that they are, they are, are going to try to ensure their, their privilege. They, they, they're going to try, because in, in Bolsonaro government, the military men, they have a lot of privilege, financial privilege, especially. So what happens is, is that I think they're going to press Lula, uh, to make a pressure in Lula, so Lula can ensure the same privilege that Bolsonaro gives to them. I think this is going to happen. Like, okay, we are not going to attack the PT government, but you have to, like, uh, to help us financially, you, you know, you understand? So I think this is going to happen more like uh, a financial pressure in PT, if PT becomes the, the new government, rather than like an um, a, a, a attack, like an army attack. I think this is what's going, going to happen. And about the young people here in Brazil, the young people, they don't support Bolsonaro. If you see the polls, most young people, they are for Lula. Most young people, they have more, more uh, you know, progressive ideas, this is very good. So this has to do with how uh, the far right movements, they don't really make any strong connections with the needs of the young people. The young people here in Brazil, they're in a really bad time to be young because we don't really have good jobs. Uh, we have a lot of them have debts, their universities, uh, some of uh, they, we suffer especially the, the, the black uh, young people suffer from a police violence. So they don't really like a man who, who praises the policeman and who praises the military. They, 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 it doesn't really fit with the, the, what happens in the, the neighborhoods in Brazil when the, the young guys, the young kids, they are brutalized by police a lot of times. So what happens uh, is that young people are not with Bolsonaro, but we cannot reach uh, as much as we would like to reach. We have social movements of young people, anti-capitalist movements, people uh, movements for popular education that we try to make uh, in Brazilian neighborhoods, but we, we are out of hands because there's a lot of place for us to be. We don't really have all the, the structure to be in all these places with young people, but there's a lot of space. If we go and if we say what we think, a lot of people is going to, uh, to become part of us. So it's a good time to be of a mass organization, uh, or, uh, uh, of a mass uh, politics organization in Brazil. It's a good time to be because young people, they are, really, they are willing to listen. They are willing to become part of the movement. So this is very good. And about PSOL, PSOL have 
uh, 11 congressmen and women uh, is not a lot because there is 500, 500 of congressmen in Brazil. So it's really a minority. Uh, PSOL have some work in unions. So, and PSOL have some work in universities and in some social movements like uh, homeless movement. It's a movement that very strong here in Brazil, people that doesn't have homes in the cities. So PSOL has uh, a kind of, uh, is, is rooted in these movements. We have militants of PSOL in a lot of unions, like uh, unions of transportation workers. Uh, so this is very important for us because like uh, here in Sao Paulo, there is the subway and there's a really system, a, a transportation system. And there is this union of the work, workers of subway. And we have a lot of militants of the soul there. So this is very important because if something happens, we can be part of uh, paralyzation of the city. Because if the, these people stop, all the city stops. So this is this is what, what we do. Uh, right now, the soul is supporting Lula in the first round uh, because the Lula, uh, it, even though we know what Lula represents in terms of class conciliation, we know that Lula is the only one who can uh, defeat Bolsonaro in the elections. So we are with Lula, uh, and because uh, we, this is the first, uh, the first need. The first need is to take Bolsonaro off. The the first thing that we have to fight is to defeat Bolsonaro as a president. We know that Bolsonarism is not going to disappear, like uh, the Bolsonaro, uh, like the this this far right movement in the society is not going to disappear. But it's going to be very great uh, if they don't that doesn't have the president. So uh, we are trying to we are going the campaigns. We do a street campaign, like talking to people in the streets. Uh, we talk to people uh, in the neighborhoods. So PT is doing. There is a method uh, that PT uses. There is to make uh, neighborhoods committees, like uh, like uh, a cell of people in that and this neighborhood of campaign and some of people are uh, they are voluntarily in this in this committees a lot of them so it's a way to make the campaign grow right now uh, i thought uh, the, the the campaign were going to be more more intense i i, I am kind of worried about the the less of uh, intensity in the campaign right now but we are trying thanks luana did you have uh no yeah, well, I guess it was, yeah. Um, okay, well, then we'll go to Jim. Uh, thank you very much to our speakers and to Luana. I have travelled on the Sao Paulo subway system. It is the biggest in the world. Is that correct? And you need a compass to get uh, I, I guess one of, one, of the, one of the big one ones. One of the biggest. All right. Seemed like the yeah. biggest to us. Um, okay. Anyway. Um, for, uh, two questions quickly. The future of the Amazon is something that is right in the center of world politics, not just Brazilian politics. And I wonder what has Lula said about is going to happen about the clearing, the mass clearing of the Amazon in the first question. The second is the the future of the Latin American pink tide mark two. So we saw the pink tide governments come in in the 2000s and then there was a right wing reaction, including in many countries and including uh, Bolsonaro. And now it appears that there is now another pink tide coming in. Um, I wonder, you know, what future you see for this. Lula has stated that he will build closer relations with Venezuela. He, he has openly stated that recently, reported. We have the change of government in Colombia. Um, it seems to me there is the possibility of stronger economically and political ties and a, and a formation of an economic bloc against US imperialism in Latin America. Uh, I wonder, you know, what possibility you think that might happen? given, as we understand, the limitations of Lula, but whether they, on the second time round, he will feel the need to al ally himself with the other Latin American countries left of centre to build a, 
a sort of a, a barrier against United States imperialism, which also relates to the question of military coups and and political coups. So two questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've got another question from the audience and then we'll go back to you too. Hi, Conrad. Khaled from Sydney. Uh, my question is uh, about the, uh, what we call it, the devil conflicts in church. When they tag socialists as they are like gay and they are devil. And I don't know, like uh, these things, like I heard about it in too many different countries. And uh, especially in country like uh, following the Catholic Church, like in, in Brazil, and they cannot see what the liberal parties doing and changing the religion of people to be not Catholic, to be Protestant or other things linked with the American, where the American is playing this game. So if they feel like the socialist is devil, is the liberal not doing devil things by changing the people's religion? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we'll go to Luana. Okay, uh, so about Amazon, uh, Lula is he's saying in his speech about stopping deforestation. So this, this is very important of him to say publicly, uh, to say that his future government is going to put an end in the um, deforestation that is happening right now in Amazon. Uh, but we know that there is limits to this because in the last governments, uh, PT had to to make agreements with the agribusiness sector because the agribusiness sectors uh, they really they go for Amazon they want more land and more land and more land uh, because they, they are not producing food really they they produce commodities to sell uh, like for for the Asia especially and Europe. So what happens uh, is that Lula is saying that he's not going to to defeat agribusiness. He's going to be a friend of agribusiness and to be a friend of Amazon. This is what he's saying right now. I don't really know, but we hope that uh, at last in the speech, he's going to, to make some commitments. This is important to us because there is two kinds of deforestation in Amazon, uh, the legal and the illegal. Both are dangerous for us, but I guess what can happen is that Lula is, is going to try, the PT government is going to try to, to attack, to defeat the illegal deforestation, but they are not going to, but there's a lot of rules where you can, uh, you can follow these rules and deforestate Amazon. So, he, so this, I think uh, something, this line is going to happen. I don't know if you, if I was understood that, but like it's going to be also a constellation thing. Uh, I, I don't know really what pink thought means. I don't know if I understood right the term pink thought. Um, so yeah, pink tide just refer refers to the sort of left, the left wing governments, um, coming to power. So, you know, for example, um, Evo Morales in Bolivia, um, but you know, all happening around the same time and then, you know, for example, with some of them being, you know, Bolsonaro coming in is the sort of right wing reaction to that. Okay. And then now recently we've got, you know, more left wing governments coming to power again. So that's that's what um Jim's referring to, I believe, with Pink Tide. Pink Tide. Okay, sort of, okay, yeah, understood. The next the next Pink Tide. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So I think uh, that a future PT government uh, will be going to make uh, uh, is going to align with left government in the Latin America. I think this is this is a fact because right now we have this configuration with a lot of governments of the left in Latin America, like in Colombia. Uh, we didn't believe that we could have a Petro in France in Colombia because Colombia is a country with a very imperialist uh, influence. So this is a really a really good thing, like uh, like an alienation of a lot of countries in Latin America at the same time having 
progressive governments. So I think uh, we are going to form to strengthen the block of of uh, left Latin America. This is going to be really good. Uh, but there is a lot of differences, like I, I said to you guys, like uh, some, like in Bolivia, for example, uh, they made a new constitution where they they uh, uh, declared themselves as a plurinational state, like a state with a lot of people, with a lot of language, native language. So this is very progressive. We, we didn't have this in Brazil, not yet. So I think there's going to be an aligning of the countries, yes, especially in the ideological, uh, uh, ideologically. But I don't, I don't know if uh, there are going to be difference between the government. That what I, what I mean. But I think uh, we are going to have, especially in the Amazon, we uh, a unified policy. This is very important because Amazon uh, is in Brazil, it's in Colombia, it's in Peru, uh, it's in a lot of countries. So we need to have a unified policy for Amazon. And Gustavo Petro of Colombia is talking a lot about it, how much uh, he wants to have with Brazil and Peru and Venezuela and Ecuador uh, wanting to have a unified policy because this is Amazon is not a national matter. It's an international matter, but especially a matter of Latin America. So we want to have, so especially Gustavo Petro uh, is trying to, to do this, this movement of like going for the other countries in the, the Latin America, uh, searching for a unified policy for Amazon. I, I think we, we can, I, I, it's not all the matters where we can advance, but I think in this matter, we can advance a lot with this aligning. And about churches, that's it, religion. There was the last question, right? Okay, so about churches, I, I don't know if I really understood the, the question itself, but I want to say a little more about this. Uh, in a lot of countries, uh, we see that people are, are really influenced by their religious leaders. I think this happens more uh, when financial crises are happening, unless I see this in Brazil, because people, they are really in a struggle here. The hunger be, uh, they was back in Brazil. Like in the years of PT, we had class conciliation policies, but people didn't, uh, they, they weren't so poor. People weren't so poor. So we, we have like programs against hunger, but we don't have right now. People are really in a state of despair. And I think when this happens, the churches, they have a role of supporting people, even financially, they support people, but they, they came with a political program, a conservative political program. So what happens is that right now, uh, the, uh, in the worsening of life conditions, the churches, they gain strength because they can say they are the way. The way is God. It's not like this world. The world is the, the, the way is another world, you know? So this is what happens. Uh, we have this, this really big problem here. Uh, but I think young people, they, are, they have a more critical approach in religion. Young people, uh, they, they are not anti-religion, but they have a more critical approach. They don't think that religion could, uh, can, could be all of their lives, as part of their, their spirituality, but don't have to dominate their lives. So I, I see this a lot in, of, in young people in Brazil. Thanks, Luana. Uh, we've got another question from the audience. Oh, I was just going to ask Andre, um, what is the size of the Brazilian population in Sydney or in Australia and what is their makeup? Is it left or right, <laughs> the majority? And thousand people uh, six thousand people live here brazilians live in here in australia and the next election at six eight percent votes by for bolsonaro 68 yeah sure. a, yeah and but we started to do a campaign last year with no social media and to convince like the left brazilians here the lgbt community here to transfer the to to vote here in australia yeah, the, the, yes, because you can vote like the, the election will be on 2nd of October now. You can vote like in the, 
the consulate, the Brazil, Brazilian consulate here. And I think it is going to be a bit different because we did a big campaign to people transfer their notes, could vote here. But we have, to, and a lot of people think they are disappointed, Bolsonaro too. But what's a big group? 68% is a lot. Thanks. Uh, thanks to both of you. Um, we've got another question from the audience. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, just a question about your role as a counsellor and Mariela Franco. And um, actually, this relates to you and your organising as well. Um, Andre, the Mariela Franco was, was murdered in 2018, I think. Um, and she was a counsellor, a very out lesbian counsellor um, and rallies um, against the murder, which was probably by Bolsonaro's cousin or brother-in-law or certainly re very close to Bolsonaro, rallies against her murder um, and feminist rallies since have had really big pictures of Mariella. Um, she was probably the most famous PESOL counsellor, um, but she was in a different city. And so I'm wondering now, because there's so many PESOL counsellors, first of all, what do you do in your role? And then what do other PESOL counsellors do? Um, and there hasn't been such a threat against a PESOL leader since, um, but, you know, is the threat still there? Thank you. Um, we'll go to Luana first and then Andre. Okay, uh, thank you for your, guess, for your question. Uh, it still hurts to talk about Marielle. We have this pain sting in our chests uh, because Marielle was one of the founders of PESOL. She was a very strong militant, a very influence, uh, influential militant for all the country. Uh, so it was, it was, it, it's still a pain for a lot of us. Marielle was a council woman in Rio de Janeiro. I am a council woman in Sao Paulo. Uh, Marielle, uh, she was like um, a big organizer of the working class. That's what she was, of the poor people, of the black people. And that's why she was murdered. Because she was a very powerful voice, a very powerful strength. Uh, in defending people and, and doing people uh, to, to, to be in the struggle. So it, it is not only like uh, she was the one fighting for people. She, 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 she used to bring people to the fight. So this is very dangerous. Uh, Marielle were, was killed for, uh, by the militia. It's a paramilitary group. Uh, where Bolsonaro is rooted, there is a, is a paramilitary forces. There's a lot of them in Brazil. We call them militia. Uh, and there is a, especially in Rio de Janeiro, where Bolsonaro uh, uh, came from too. So what happens is that the militia is formed by cops, by a lot of police officers, of uh, uh, men from the army, and they, and especially ex-cops, and they form a parallel, a, a, a parallel state. It's a paramilitary group, and they are, and they, you know, they. It's like a mafia. It's like uh, they are gangster, but uh, they, they are, they are, they have ideological ideas. They are far right. You know, they see themselves as far right groups. It's not only a, a regular uh, uh, criminals. They are criminals, but they are political criminals. And they they killed Maria. Uh, here uh, in the in, in the me as a council woman in São Paulo, uh, we try to organize a lot of struggles of people, especially some groups. So I am I I used to work in the SUS, that is the Brazilian healthcare system. So we organize a lot of health healthcare workers. So right now, uh, uh, most part of my time is going to hospitals and talking to people that work in the healthcare. This is part of my work. There are some, some council men that go to schools more. So this is kind of a part of our, our work. Uh, we make propositions, law propositions about anti-racist uh, subjects. This is, this is important for us. And by being a council woman or council man in Brazil, you have the money to support movements. This is very important because in the cabinet, 
we can uh, bring the money, choose uh, the, the money that we allow it to have in the system, in the Brazilian state system, we can support movements, like uh, we can help like uh, uh, popular education movements, homeless people movement, uh, movements for land, anti-racist movement. So we can uh, we can do more with more structure, financial structure. This is important for us. So also what we do in the in the Congress and the places of in the le legislative house, we also uh, we can be a voice uh, for people. So we can make. Uh, we can say what's going on because what usually happens here is that uh, the the councils, the, the the council and the city hall of São Paulo are very hidden. So the, the the people doesn't really know what's happening, what's being voted, what uh, rights they are losing, you know. So what we can do is to be a voice and talk to everybody and call the press. We call the press all the time. Look. Like, Press, come over here today because there's going to they're trying to pass this bill that is going to attack the workers. So we try to make this, but Marielle, uh, we doesn't have justice yet. This is part of our fight because we uh, the murders of Marielle, they are not in jail. They were not caught. This is a big, big, big fight for us. Thanks, Luana. Um, thanks so much for that. We've got a question online now. Um, can you please share your insights into what may change with Brazil's relationship and foreign policy toward the other BRICS nations and their respective leaders? Um, uh, Luana. Sorry, uh, could you repeat? Oh, BRICS, um, is... Russia. Okay, okay. Uh, Brazil, okay. Yeah, I, I think this is an economical and political concept of BRICS that uh, PT government, uh, they strengthen it. I, I don't really know uh, if this economical and politi political bloc, uh, if if have the same strength that had in some years ago, but I think that Lula is going to uh, I think he's going to try to to renew the BRICS, you know, because in the Bolsonaro government, it was not, I think, BRICS. It was not even a term that people use it, that the government use it. Uh, what happens is that Brazil has a lot of relationships with China, especially economical relationships, uh, commodities relationships, and they well, we never stop it to have. So, but I think that uh, in the government of Bolsonaro, uh, it was reducted to an economical relation. It was not a political, ideological relation with China, with other countries. I think in the future Lila government is going to, to go for more than economical association to make a political association. I think this is going to happen. Thanks, Luana. Um, you Yes, I think the, the BRICS is very important for Brazil. Uh, it's, it's one of the motives that, like the US always, they start the, the, the blow the movement, you know, and before, because Brazil is a very strong country. And they're like in the leader with the, the Russian and China and India and South Africa. And I think they have to react. react and this starts with Lula government and I think it is it's very important for Brazil to make it strong and be more independent from the US. So. Just to say a little bit more, I think this is very important and it's very important in a cultural level because part of Bolsonaro government is to is to say that US like a it's not only an economical relationship with US, with USA, it's a cultural relation. Like, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's very important, uh, BRICS, because uh, also Latin America blogs, because it's important for um, culturally to Brazilian people to see, uh, so we can see ourselves as part of uh, countries of, uh, countries that are part of, uh, that, that we're not, align it with US is very important for us. Here in Brazil, people lack identity of Latin American. We don't see ourselves as Latin American. And uh, economical and political blocks like uh, 
the blocks of Latin American countries and also BRICS are very important culturally. Thanks, Luana. Um, I've got another question if, if no one else does. And I th it was sort of touched on with talking about um, constitutions and I guess the push for four new constitutions um, in several, you know, left governments that have come to power. Um, that that might not be something that, that Lula's put forward. I, I assume he hasn't, but I was wondering if there's, if that's part of a, a demand or if there's a push from, you know, organisations or political groups for, for something that, you know, along the lines of a cons constituent assembly or a, you know, a push for a new constitution, which seems to, be one of the first steps of of a lot of left governments that have come to power. Obviously, we've you know in Chile we've seen that put forward. Obviously, didn't go through, um, but you know obviously it happened in happened in Bolivia. Um, so I was just wondering if you you know have an idea of what's if there's anything around yeah constitutional change. So uh, our constitution uh, was uh, pretty much advanced constitution. Uh, if you see others uh, in the in Latin America, our constitution uh, is not from the dictatorship times, like in Chile. The constitution of Chile is a constitution of Pinochet government. It's not the case in Brazil. Here in Brazil, our constitution is for 88, uh, 1988, almost 90. So we we, had, we call we call this constitution the, the citizen constitution because it says about like uh, we have uh, advancements like uh, the universal health care. The universal health care that says that we would have a system of free of charge health care in Brazil. This is, a, this is a guarantee by our constitution, also education, also transportation, and some, um, of course, we, we would like to advance, but I don't think this is the first uh, demand of people. I, I don't think so. I think it, it can happen at some point, especially uh, about the economical rules in our constitution, or the, you know, they, they, they kind of create a situation where we have rights, but we cannot found the rights because you have a lot of uh, neoliberal rules in the, in the constitution because uh, almost like we cannot spend the money of people with the people, we have to pay for uh, debits in banks. Uh, so I, I think this is part of the changes uh, that the, a new constitution could have, but I don't think it's a, it's a, it's a very vocal uh, demand. Thanks, Lana. Um, got a question from the audience. I was wondering with the army, how would the army cope with the progressive governments with the, in um, Brasilia? How would the relationship be um, the Brazilian army and the progressive government, do you think? I uh, so go to uh, Luana. Okay, uh, so the army in Brazil, it means a lot of things. We have like the high officials and the not so high officials. It has differences. Uh, I, I can say that the high officials like the generals, they are trying to have space. Uh, I think they're going to, to, to try to have space in the government. Uh, in space, I mean economical space, financial space, and also political space. I think that they are going to try. The 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 not so high guys in the army, like the workers of the army, if you could say, if you could call workers, uh, I don't think they are going to to try to you know have a lot of space or anything. What happens? What is dangerous is that uh, the ideas of Bolsonaro, the ideas they were really they really attracted the, the not so strong people in the army, you know, like the, the people of the base of the army, the young men of the base, they are really attracted to the discourse of, of Bolsonaro. This is dangerous. The high officials, uh, 
I see them, and a lot of people see them. They have a right wing ideology, but they like money a lot. So if the, a, a PT government can uh, guarantee ensure their privilege, I think they're not not going to be a problem. If Lula ensures their financial privilege, but they're not so high, the down, the the base, it, it can be. I, I don't really know what can happen because they are more radicalized. You know, this is what happened. I don't think they have this the strength to, to to make something, but I, I think it's a dangerous situation. Thanks, Luana. Um, if we've got uh, no more questions or if there's maybe final comments from you, um, I'd just like to thank you both so much um, for your time. Um, we really appreciate you, um, you know, taking time out to to answer our questions and and give us an update it's it's really important um for us here here in australia to you know show solidarity with with the struggles all over the world particularly in in latin america um and we appreciate uh both of your work um as as activists um in the fight for a for a better world um i just want to say that the host the host of this event green left um has a website and a hard copy comes out every week um so if anyone would like to uh, become a supporter for as little as uh, five dollars a month talk to jim or you can visit the green left website um and with that we'll wrap up <laughs>